Hello, hello, beautiful soul. I'm excited to share another interview from our Ask the Author series for our latest book, Manifesting Love. Today, the interview is with Case Pauling. He is mentioned in the book, but he didn't write the story. His lovely wife, Ofkia Takens, wrote the story about how she tried to run away from love. <laughs> but fortunately, their love story was meant to be. I wanted to interview Case because when you read Ofkia's story and all the ways she was blocking and trying to say no and get away from this love affair, it became pretty clear that these two are soulmates. They were meant to be together. But if somebody rejected you multiple times, would you keep trying? I wanted to ask him why. Why was he so persistent? And I think you'll be interested in his response. So please do tune in to this interview with Case Pauling, who is partially one of the contributing authors to this new book on manifesting love. Case Pauling, it is so wonderful to connect with you. Thank you so much for granting us this interview for our new book, Manifesting Love. Thank you for your invitation. Well, it, yes. it's a pleasure. It's an honor. I have interviewed your lovely wife who wrote her story for this book about how she almost didn't end up well. Let me not say that. She was actively saying no to your advances. And that's why I asked you to do this interview. Because when you read her story in this book, you were asking for a date and another date. And, and she got to the point where she was saying, no, 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 no. And just trying to run away. But as I say, you can't run away from true love. So I just want to hear from you. Like, why did you not take no for an answer? Like, what made you... So persistent. Um, well, you you have seen her, you have met her. Yes. And um, everybody who know, has seen her knows it. she's a very special uh, lady. Uh, she's beautiful. She's dynamic. She is enthusiastic, uh, creative. Uh, anything, uh, everything you want in a woman, uh, she has it. She still has it, so that was my reason to to go and to uh, to uh, keep uh, going and keep trying to uh, get a date with her. And I and I did. I succeeded in getting some dates, <laughs> but she still wasn't very much. In. She was polite and and friendly, and and that's it. So I had to uh, keep on going and and do all kind of things to. Uh, get her interested. Now, she told me something which I find surprising because when you read the story in Manifesting Love, you were so persistent. You were trying all these different ways, coming to her, her bookshop, you know, calling, sending flowers. But she said that you were actually also surprised with yourself because you're normally shy. Is that true? Well, yes, that's true. Uh... I was, and still a little bit, of course, a uh, shy person. Uh, it was yeah, part of the character and how I grew up. And, um, well, this was, a, a, somewhere there was a reason to, uh, to go for it and, and forget your shyness. Mm. And it worked. It worked in the end, let's, let's say that. <laughs> you... It cost me a lot of flowers and, and, and uh, hours on the telephone and a lot of dates. But in the end, I, I succeeded. Yes. And now you've been married how many years? Uh, we were married for 33 years, almost 34. Right. And you have your first grandbaby in the world. So things, yes, are, things are going well for you and you're thriving. And I love to hear it. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also curious a little bit about the connection that you have because you are a writer. You're also a communication coach and you a uh, communication consultant and you're a writing coach. Like you help people get their books done. And mm -hmm. I was really, really impressed with your wife, Ofkia, because she has written so many books and you guys got together and, and teamed up on some projects. Am I correct in that? Yes, that's, that's correct. Yes. Uh, she wrote a lot of uh, school books and, and then another book on, on learning problems. And um, I did 
well, about six, seven, eight other books uh, on my own. Uh, but um, the last two years, we do um, some book projects together, and they're most mostly of them are about life shifts, mm -hmm. uh, turning points in people's lives. So we collect special stories of people, and we put them in a book, and um, well, well, to present these special stories uh, to encourage other people to make that. Uh, turning point in their lives as well. And I'm, I'm also curious about uh, kind of the process. Now, when I asked Ofkia about your, your love affair, she was able to finally understand, like she also was confused, like why does he keep pursuing me when I said no? But she mm -hmm. said that she came to understand that you guys are soulmates. Do you use that term soulmate at all? Uh, nowadays I do, but in those days I didn't, because I was more of a scientist, mm -hmm. and of he was more of the emotion and the feeling and the the, the other the spiritual thing. And um, but I learned my uh, my lessons, and I and I understand much more of these things. But um, yes, you may call us uh, soulmates, although in it, I felt it like that in in those days. But I never mentioned it uh, with this word, of course. Mm -hmm. um, when well, it was a special feeling that you kept running and, and kept going, uh, at least that was for me. And um, well, it, it took some time, but uh, in the end, it uh, turned out very well. And do you have any recommendations to someone who is single, who is looking to manifest love? It's all about, it starts with, with a certain feeling, of course. Uh, you, have to be, you have to be surprised by the look of someone, uh, by the way she moves, the way, the way she looks, uh, anything. And if that's the case, um, you should go for it. And, um, well, try anything. You, you write a poem, uh, send flowers. Um, if you can sing, sing for her. I can't sing, but... I can play the guitar a bit, so that helps too. But uh, try anything, uh, especially something with art or, or, or flowers or, um, well, anything that, that, she, that you think she will like or she will think special. You have to make sure you stand out from the rest. And <laughs> if she's beautiful, there are a lot of others, of course. So you have to work for it. Mm. And um, as I hear Simon Sinek always say, it's about the consistency. Mm. It's not the big deal, the one thing, uh, but it's just the consistency of all little things over a period of time. So that's what I learned. And that would be my advice. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that you have been consistent with sending flowers through the all 33 years. I remember when Ofkia was at my event in Cannes and oh, yes. I was just starting to give this seminar online and with these people and I kept getting this phone message and I'm like, silence the phone. And they said, no, there's a delivery. And we opened yeah. up the door and it was these beautiful flowers from you. So sweet. And I think you're right, that persistence, that consistency, no matter what country she was in, is really beautiful. From Holland with love, yes. Yes, I love it. So Case, tell me about some of your books. I, I had the good pleasure of being with you in Ofkia in Holland, so I got to leave with one of your, your books, but what what are you up to these days in, in your books, not the ones that you do together? Uh, my books, well, they're all kind of uh, subjects. Um, anything I like, uh, I jump on and then uh, I make a book about it. So sometimes it's more a historic subject, and sometimes more an actual. Um, I did something on the millennium when the time was there. Uh, and I did a book on the two English books, and most of them are in Dutch, of course. But uh, the two English books, uh, one is about um, um, Mr. Tolkien. Uh, everybody knows him, he's the big hobbit. And 
uh, Mr. Tolkien, and he made a uh, he made a, a trip with with uh, three of his friends every year, and I described one of the trips. It's fiction, of course, but I um, I read all about him and his friends. And uh, my big question was, if they walk for four days together, what would they be talking about? Mm. Well, in the book you can read what I think they were talking about uh -huh. these days. And the other book was about a, a German general. It's um, a surprising subject, maybe. But the man uh, became 96 years old. He, um, he was born in 1870. I won't make this too long. And um, the special thing is that he had he did very strange and crazy things, like in First World War, he was in Africa. First World War, everybody talks about uh, Europe and the European front. But the, the strangest and the, the most bizarre things happened in Africa hmm. in the days. And he was in, uh, on the boat in 1913 to Africa, and there he met Karen Blixen. She's the author of uh, Out of Africa, you know, the, the beautiful movie with Meryl Streep. Yeah. And um, he had this little romance on the boat with her, and they promised each other they would meet. Uh, together and she would uh, collect uh, horses for uh, his army and uh, he would find other things for her but she was on the English side and he was on the German side and they never met till Second World War when she visited him in Germany hmm. but it was very special they had a little romance there even though she was uh, on her way to her uh, future husband hmm. But she never loved him, I guess. She loved uh, Africa. So th these are two of the books I wrote. Uh, anything I think interesting and uh, but what will make a good story, I'll try to put in a book. Yeah. Well, I've noticed that you and Ofkia make quite a good team. You guys are able to crank out books really quickly. I remember talking to her about some ideas and then a few months later, things were materializing, new books, new projects. How do you help people, um, as, a, as a writing coach, how do you help people get their books done and get their, their concept out to the world? I ask them a lot of things first. I ask them about the idea, about um, what it would be like. Um, the, if it's fiction, I want to know more about uh, the other characters, not just uh, the main character, um, not just the, the one story, but all the other stories that uh, are coming with it. Because, um, and, and when it's non-fiction, I want an, an outline of the, the whole uh, discussion. Because one of the main problems is that people start with an idea, start writing, I did it myself uh, when I was very young. I started writing the first chapter when I had a great idea. And, um, and after that, it stopped. Hmm. So we have this box at home still with 50 first chapters, <laughs> 50 different books. But it all, it all ended there. So I learned the hard way to uh, think about structure. How many chapters? Uh, what will you do in every chapter? How will it end? You have to have some idea of how it will end before you start. Hmm. So that's what I teach the people. Awesome. Yes. Well, I love it. Well, I love that you have um, are helping other people. I love that you have stayed and encouraged Ofkia to share her story, your story, in this book mm -hmm. and in others. So thank you, Case, for just giving us a little inside um, knowledge of what was going through your mind and heart through this long process of, of getting Ofkia to uh, accept your hand in marriage and become the queen. I love it a lot, so thank you. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Always good to connect with you. So there you have it, my friends. You'll have to read about Case's really intense persistence in getting Ofkia past the dating stage. It really is a beautiful read in this new book, Manifesting Love. And if you are struggling to get your book project completed, then definitely 
check out Case's website, casepauling.com, and you can learn about how he helps people as a writing coach and a communication consultant. And judging by their track record, it's very effective. So I think you'll find some value there. Once again, I thank you, Case. I thank you, my audience, for tuning in and share with us your manifesting love stories as well. I'm definitely curious to hear which of these rituals, which of these feelings and connections resonate with you on your journey to manifesting love. Until we meet again, I'm sending you so much love from Copenhagen this time. Take good care.